and everybody can go Sorry, 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 sorry. We have over here the organizations of the circulatory system. You have the lymphatic circulation and the vessel structure. From this particular slides, I will not ask you anything yet, but I will do some particular true or false in regarding the lymphatic circulation and the vessel structure. For example, from this one. Careful with this one you will have a true or false question from this one. There is two tests of four with a true or false with this particular slide question. It's interesting because the analogy of the arteries and veins is similar, but it's not the same. The arteries is more, I would say, resistant vessel because they need to hold the pressure that is coming out from the from the heart when it's pushing out the blood, meaning that they have a huge tunica media with a huge amount over there, of course, of a small muscle. That is the only way how the vessel can basically expand and recoil without basically having a rupture over there internally. Be careful with this one. Two persons will see this one of four over there. Gastric or geriatric consideration. I will not go with this one, but I need to tell you that once that you pass the 20s, believe it or not, the big vessels start to lose some kind of expansions over there. Accumulations of cholesterol and fat in some of the vessels, and you will see that the formation of atherosclerosis will follow. And that is why some big vessels lose that elasticity and became a little bit constrict in the movement with the blood pressure over there. Again, I will not ask you this one. We have another geriatric consideration because this is normally affected the old people like me, obviously, all of that, but I decide not to ask you this one. Meaning that when you reach to the hospital, you will encounter this kind of situation and you will go through this one again. You have it over there in your book. Now, the anatomy of capillaries, yes, this one is important for me. Careful with this one. There is a true or false. True or false in one of four quizzes over there. It's important because the capillaries is basically the business end of the vasculatory system or the cardiovascular system is there that the oxygen and the nutrient need to reach to be supplied to those cells in your body. Very important indeed because they have huge amounts of musculature too and they can control the blood flow and even the blood pressure at that level. Meaning careful with that one true or false. The next one is the lymphatic structure and I have also people choice over here. One of four. Exactly like that. Everything is true about the lymphatic structure except, yeah, we change something over there, okay? Thin wall resembles the veins, but there is a huge difference over here. The lymphatic don't tend to stretch or recoil like the veins or the arteries. It's more rigid in a structure over there, and that is a problem because sometimes we will see that we have obstruction because of neoplasm or because an infection, and these fellows start to expand to a point that they will never regain the small shape, and that is a huge problem because you have deformation on those extremities. Um, for the people that probably already know, I am talking about elephantiasis. That is basically the terminology that they use when we have these particular scenarios. I need to tell you, there is a field in nursing that always take care for this particular population. There is some certification that basically, I would say, prepare you how to deal with this particular patient that have problems in the lymphatic system. And it's a completely subspecialty in the nursing field where you need to have some certification and believe me, pay good, good money because you will deal just with this particular population, how you do the massage, how you will do the proper movements of this patient to help them out to move that particular lymph fluid inside of their vessels. Again, careful with this one, one of four. Now the lymph, like the blood, 
that is moving inside of your body follows some hemodynamics, obviously. Everything that is coming out from your heart is coming under a huge amount of pressure until a point that it reaches the capillaries that is low pressure and in the veins that continue with that low pressure. I will not go with the specific over here because this is more anatomy, but you're supposed to know this. If you still have some problem, careful because in nursing, you need to go through this one again. Again, I will not ask you this one. Now, exactly what I mentioned, blood flow, pressure and resistance. Blood flow, movement along the pressure gradient within the vascular bed. Pressure, blood move from an area of high pressure that is an artery to a low pressure that is in the veins. And the resistance is any particular force that basically impede that blood to move over here. Obviously, what I read over here is the principle how to manage the blood pressure in a patient. If all the vessels, especially the arteries, became smaller or they constrict, the heart need to increase its pressure to push that blood. Our target then is to make those arteries relax to make the blood passing through them without less effort. And who controls that particular contraction in the arteries? The smooth muscle. If we give a medication to the smooth muscle to relax itself, they will expand the vessels and allow the blood to pass easily and the heart don't need to overwork. That is the reason that I mentioned this one in several classes, that the target for us is the smooth muscle using calcium blocker channels. And the example is allopidine. This medication basically blocks the calcium to reach to the smooth muscle, and the smooth muscle cannot constrict. And that is the reason that the vessels expand. This is an example you will see others later on over here. But again, I will not ask you this one in particular. The reason that I did all this explanation because we will see something related to this later on. Now, this one, careful with the Ohm's law and the Poise law. I have a multiple choice that I remove all these laws and I make a beautiful multiple choice, meaning careful with those laws. Yes, that is correct. I will do a review for the midterm. Careful with these laws. I will subtract that one. I will subtract that one and others that are a little bit over there. That is correct, the first and the one. That is part of a multiple choice. Also, careful with this one. Definition, definition. I use them, them to basically close the gap with those laws over there. I am pulling out those definitions. Yeah, I will put another set of words over there to see if you can identify the proper terminology or the proper term. Meaning, careful with this one too. This one, very associated to the other one, two or four, we'll see this multiple choice. The next one is the one that I decided to remove out. And the reason that I removed this one out, because I like, no, I will go back. I will go back. This one goes with this one. And this one because there is two kinds of question. This one also go with this one. Okay, every law that you see over there, make sure that you put it aside in the next, in, in this particular slide, because I have a multiple choice of law. I will put the definition of the law in particular, and you need to tell me which one it is. Meaning, careful with that one, and the other one that we mentioned before. In this particular one, I also want to make sure that you remember the final bullet over here. This is a true or false for some. This is part of the multiple choice of the loss. Okay. Moving on to the next one, the famous dynamics in microcircular. I will go with, with this one. Not the middle one, no, that is correct. Not the middle one in the previous one, that is correct. Now, in this one, 
this is very important because it's something that I will take time to explain, but that is the reason that I didn't include it in the quiz. I don't like to include that question if everybody don't have the background. But I told you that the main protein that is produced in the liver is what? Albumin. All right? Albumin, albumin, South Florida. I basically mentioned in one class that albumin, that protein play a huge role in your blood. And the main role that they play inside of your system is to keep every fluid in your vessels inside of your vessels. You need to have some kind of magneto for that fluid, for that blood that is passing through inside of your vessels. And that magneto, that hook, is albumin. Obviously, si you have a problem in the liver, no production of albumin, meaning that the fluid will start to escape outside of your vessels. That is the reason that when you see a person that have liver problem, the first thing that you will notice is that beer belly that will, they will develop because the accumulations of fluid in the abdomen. Okay? Meaning all these pressures that you see over here, plasma colloid osmotic pressure, especially those two, is in reference of that pressure that the albumins do keep the fluid inside of your vessels. In any particular scenarios that you have a problem with the albumin inside of the vessels, the fluid will start to escape. And the formation of edema will follow. That is the reason that I didn't include these questions over there, because to make myself clear, I need to explain this one in class. And unless that you read by your side, anatomy, because this is most of the things in anatomy that I explained this, will be a little bit tricky to ask you this one in the quiz. But remember, this albumin, this most common protein, is the one who keeps those pressures inside of your vessel to keep all the substance that belongs to your blood inside of your blood. If there is something that happens, all of this substance will start to escape. And even in the kidney, that could happen. If you are not producing albumin, all the substance will go inside of the urine and you will lose a huge amount of protein. Now that I say that, now some people will understand why when a kidney is damaged, the first thing that would tell me that the kidney is damaged is when you see the presence of albumin in the urine. It's clear. Meaning, keep that in mind, but when we enter later on to discuss the cardiac problem. Again, nothing here. The next one, yes, the next one is also important because I will put this one out, Stalin hypothesis, very important for me. And you see over here what happened, exactly what I mentioned before an increase in the capillary fluid that is coming out from those capillaries outside of the vessel will create edema. But forget edema right now. I will talk about edema later. We need to concentrate in this one. Okay? Some people will see a true or false. Some people will see a multiple choice. Two or four with that one. Just the first bullet. That is correct. Just the first. That is correct. Now, capillaries and lymphatic plasma proteins are responsible for the plasma colloid, osmotic pressure, keep the fluid in the vessels, exactly what I was telling you right now. A person that is not eating meat or is only veggie, like some veggies that I have in the audience, guess what? If you are not consuming amino acid, you cannot form proteins, and since you cannot form proteins, you cannot form albumin, meaning you need to be seen careful with this also. Meaning careful with that first bullet again. Exactly what I told you over here, just to recapitulate what I said, allow the plasma to leak out can resolve in edema. So you don't have that proteins over there. I didn't say both. I said albumin. 
B12 is something that you need to acquire from the diet. It is clear. But we will talk about B12 more later on. I know that many people are very interested between napkins, B12, and lipids later on in life. Moving on in the next one. The question is out. And then you have the mechanisms of the controls of the flow. I will not go with this one because this will take time to explain also. This is most anatomy and physiology than pathology. That's why I will put it out. But I promise you, when we reach to the cardiovascular system, I will take my time to explain this area because there is still very related over there. Meaning out. This one is the one that I put it out completely. Two or four, multiple choice. Sympathetic nervous system play an important role over here one who control the diameters of your vessels. And it's interesting to notice that most of this particular control of the sympathetic nervous system basically rely in the brainstem. The brainstem, there is some group of cells that automatically control some of the systems in your body. Breathing, gagging, uh, the hormones production sometimes, the diameters of the vessels. All these particular, even coughing, all these particular automatic responses that you do, that the brain in, in your conscious need to take care, is the brain stem to the central or sympathetic nervous system that will take care of this. That is the reason that I put this one as a multiple choice in two or four tests. Very important indeed. We have some autoregulation that I will not go with this. I will basically be more related to the kidney. We will go over there soon. The control of the lymph, very important. Even that I didn't ask you this one right now, I will ask you something about this in the midterm. Remember that the lymph not only is basically is a reservoir for some white blood cells over there, but also watch out and it's basically like a booby trap for foreign invaders because the white blood cells are waiting for anything that will reach to this particular area to destroy them, okay? That's why we will see that one in the midterm. This one, reductions on the flow, impair the ability to transport gases. This is something that very familiar to the last week. That's why I put it out. This one is a multiple choice. One of four, multiple choice. Here we will have several multiple choices starting with this one. The next one also thrombosis. This one, two of four, multiple choice. As you see over here, a thrombus is a blood clot that is basically in a parking lot inside of your vessels. There is some people that don't know that they have a clot somewhere in their system until for some bad luck, the clot start to move and reach the brain or the lungs or the heart or whatever place, okay? Careful okay, with this one, it's a multiple choice. Somebody will see this one. Now, we have a clinical manifestation. You have them over there. I will not go with this clinical manifestation. Not yet. Normally, I like to look for the Hoffman sign. We will explain that one later. Now, you see over here that the thrombosis, one is informed. We need to use the anticoagulant therapy. This person that probably would take aspirin. But we have another set, believe it or not, uh, anticoagulant that we need to use because these particular fellows are very resilient. That's why they need to use medical prophylactic interventions, anti-embolic stocking or sequential compensation devices to over there. But again, I will not ask you this one. The other question that yes, that I will ask you because some people became confused between these two is embolus. Embolus and thrombosis is two different things. Embolus is something that is already traveling. A thrombus is something that is still in parking lot inside of a vessel. That is the main difference. And many people lose track to know what is 
the envelopes from what is a thrombus. Thrombus is not on the move. It's there. It's packing lot. It's a time bomb because if they move, we create a huge particular problem. But it's not like the envelopes because the envelopes is on the move and he basically can obstruct any area of your body. That's why this is a multiple choice that I need to tell you this is part of the question because I also include the other slide. That is correct. That is correct. Okay? This is how we will see it. You need to know that, and this is very important because when we enter in the cardiovascular system, I will make more defense about these two. This part over here belongs to the previous one too. Remember, two of four multiple choice. The emboa can be produced by other causes. They are fat, malignant, neoplasm tumor, collections of bacteria, air, amniotic fluid. All of these can create an embolus, and that embolus can move inside so your bloodstream, and whatever they reach, if they reach to the lungs, you already have a respiratory arrest. It comes past the heart and myocardial infarction or reach to your brain, so on, so on, so on. But I will not ask you this. The vasospasm, I will not ask you this one now. But it's very important for us because we will see some of this particular problem related to a stroke and related to cardiac problem. Meaning, probably in the midterm, you will see something related to this fellow. Important this terminology, I have true or false for you in this quiz. True or false, one question of four. Many people don't know the difference between vasculitis, phlebitis, or arteritis. You need to make sure that you know that difference. I like to make multiple choice when I put just the definition, and you need to tell me which one it is, meaning careful with that one. The mechanic, mechanical compression, believe it or not, this is something that sometimes we use, but I will not ask you this one right now. But yeah, you see over here, we use a dressing, we use a stockings to help this particular person to make sure to create the enough compression to avoid that, that blood hanging over there inside of the vessel form an embolus or form a thrombus over there. I need to tell you, most of you don't know this, but there is some person that need to use those stocking in the legs because they are diabetics and compress the leg to make sure that they have that blood on the move. But guess what? No necessary are stocking. There is pantyhose completely that they can use almost under the abdomen to make sure that they are making the, a lot of pressure in those vessels to push the blood in one direction. And the most interesting of all is that this stocking that you see over there can be by in internet with the proper amounts of pressure a physician wants. Meaning, even that, not only to buy a compression stocking over there, also a uh, wish pressure I want that basically that stock is basically helping me, my patient. You will see that, especially in cardiac patient with congestive heart failure. Moving on over there. Then we are reaching to others interesting problem that we can find out in the vessels, especially the arteriosclerosis. In this particular slide, careful with the last bullet. A true or false is just in one test. False with that particular bullet. You know that one is because I have the test in front of me. Now, moving on to the next one. Then we are reaching the lymphatic vessels. Again, I will not go with this particular introduction. Yeah, I will not go with this one either. Now, what I will go is with the next one. Careful with the second bullet over here. I need to ask you this one. Yeah, I added that particular bullet to the next one, meaning this bullet over here and the next one, all the bullets, is a multiple choice. In reality, it's two tests that have this one, but it's a multiple choice. And yeah, certainly that I put the same question also in the midterm. 
meaning that you will see this question in the quiz and you will see it in the midterm too. And who knows, in the final, probably you will put it again. I will put it again, okay? Careful with this one. In the next one, I just subtract this fellow. What is a plate? Okay, very important about what is the plague. We will see that one over there and how these particular arteries start to build a plague that can create obstruction, especially in the coronary arteries and then the heart attack. The next one, this time, these particular risk factors about tobacco, meaning that I have a multiple choice is one of four, multiple choice. Another particular question that I like to include, and this one is a true or false, careful with these four bullets over here. There is a true or false in related to this fellow. Yes, I know, only one particular question, but it's there. I like to trick you out which one is HDL, which one is LDL, which one is UPS, you know, that kind of stuff. Careful with there. The next one, I decide to remove it away because I already asked what I want to ask in the previous one. Then you have the famous way to diagnose this. But again, this is the first line of treatment. You have it in front of you. I didn't ask you this one in the quiz, but sometimes I like to ask you this one in the midterm. Okay. We are almost reaching the end. Thrombongitis of Litterans of Burger. This one I didn't ask this one, but I ask you something that is very common, especially in smokers, and is this one. Meaning three or four, almost everybody will see this multiple choice. Okay. Extreme vasoconstriction that basically will cut the blood supply over there. The 43. Yes, 43 is out, but careful with that line that I mentioned over there, because that line I can include it in the final test. But over here, this vasoconstriction is very gross that basically cut the blood supply to this particular extreme or extremities, especially the fingers and toes. And in some cases, the person have gangrene and we need to basically amputate those extremities over there of the fingers, very weird. But normally when I saw it, I saw it in a smoker patient. That is the one that are related to this particular syndrome, okay? That's why I put it over there, three or four. Another question that is coming is aneurysm aneurysm and i would include something extra for the next one from the next slide but all of this slide is there three or four we'll see this question and this first part of this next one also is included in that multiple choice three or four another question that i also add over here is the famous classical signs of a of you i will put those fellows something over there some p probably you can put pedro like uh, except you know you never know again <laughs> again for the people that are uh, out of, of the dream the first one with the previous one meaning this one aneurysm goes completely with this one over here and then this one the classical signs of symptoms, multiple choice. This one is out. This one is in. I have one question, multiple choice. This one also includes the next one, the first bullet only. And the next one that everybody's familiar with this one, yes, I put it too, but it goes vain. Most of the time, I'm so sorry, nurses to be, you will suffer this at the end of your life because you walk and walk and walk and run and walk and walk in a hospital for more than 12 hours. The socks will help you out. 
the shoes will help you out, but those Google Maps in your text will be nicely done over there. I don't need to tell you, you are a lady, meaning when you became pregnant, also is very prevalent in the pregnant ladies. Congratulations to you. you That will be beautiful parasite, meaning varicose veins over there. Some of them are hereditary. That is correct. Some of them are hereditary. Some of them is because of obesity. But the majority of time is because we have a problem in the cardiovascular system. If the heart cannot pump that blood in the right way, the blood don't move in the way that's supposed to be, increasing the pressure in the lower extremities and obviously in the walls of the veins, reason why they start to show up over there. But again, pregnant lady, high risk, person that work like hell in two legs without moving for too long, also we have a predisposition. To avoid to suffer varicose veins, not only the shoes and the socks are important, but also to be in constant movement. If you put those beautiful muscles on your legs under move, you are squeezing the vessels in the lower extremities and helping the heart to move that blood. But in the moment that you stand standing over there for too long, you will have problem over there. Well, that is a good question because there is several kinds of shoes that you can use. Uh, I always recommend the one that is very comfortable for you. In my early days, we start to use one particular shoes that have a particular protection. Sadly for us, believe it or not, because I did my medical training, yes, they always help, the compression sock help. But we tend to use, in my medical training, one particular uh, shoe that brings some particular cushion or cushion that came from Europe. It's like a gel cushion, similar to the doctor, whatever they sell in the pharmacy over here, but it's very different because it's in the entire extensions of the, of the shoe. At the same time, Exactly. Very, I would say that is the, 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 the faraway causing of that particular thing that we use over there in, in medical school that helps us a lot because you give the, the sensation that you was walking in, in cotton or in, in a beautiful cloud. That is how I can describe it. You never have a problem with that. The problem is, as a soon medical school was over, I basically have a pair of those shoes. And then the other training in the island came in, and then obviously they start to deteriorate. I am talking about in the year of the Lord a century ago. That's why I lose track from the shoes. I am, I am trying to make some connection to see how, how I can bring a pair for, for whatever they are. Yes, it's, they are really good. I'm pretty sure that the problem is because it's a, a brand from Europe, uh, it's not liked to have over there. Thank you, Claudia. Moving on over there because this is a hot. Uh, again, careful with this one. Many people will see this one. The other question that I put it is the chrono sufficiency two. One question, multiple choice, exactly like that. I changed something over there. Another question that I put it is I need to ask for this one because this is pretty prevalent in the old people too. Two or four, multiple choice, exactly like that. Okay, we are reaching the end and we are reaching with the last question because I did two different kinds of question with the next two. The famous lymphedema, you will have a multiple, now true or false with this part, a true or false, okay? Careful with those two bullets, this is a true or false. Now, the first three bullets plus the next one is a multiple choice. Okay? Again, for the people that are running to another place in front of the computer right now, you have a true or false over here with the final bullet, true or false, one or four, but then a multiple choice with these three plus these ones over here. Okay, 
careful. All right, that is basically the last one. I caught everything else. I will stop the recording.